Hello everyone, Imtiaz here. I want to talk to you today about how to become a Java developer in 2019. Okay, now there's uh, so many ways in which you can, uh, you know, learn Java, but I want to talk to you about the fastest way. Okay, because there's always the best way of doing something and Java is a huge space and there are a lot of things to learn and a lot of things not to waste time on learning. All right. And so that's what I like to help my students do in my courses. And it has uh, helped many students that took advantage of it and got jobs and so on. So uh, what do you do to become a Java developer? Well, number one, you need to learn the Java syntax, right? You need to know the basics of programming and uh, learn about loops and if else statements and variables and, uh, and of course, classes and interfaces. Uh, that's level one Java. I've got a course on that on my website, of course. Uh, the next thing is learning generics, interfaces, abstract classes, and um, a, a, you know uh, lambda expressions, collections, multi-threading, even. So those are that's like level two Java that you should also learn. I've got a course on that as well. Multi-threading though nowadays is not as important because there's so many tools out there that help you distribute your workload, okay, and parallelize jobs. So if you need to build a batch application, don't do it in a Java multi-threaded application, okay? That doesn't mean that you don't need to know multi-threading. My course teaches that, but I wouldn't invest too much time in that uh, when you're first getting started. That's maybe something you can focus on later uh, when you have uh, you know, a year or two of experience, solid experience in Java development, okay? So you get the programming syntax out of the way. What is next? Well, next you need to learn about databases and the SQL language, okay? And uh, SQL is critical, right? Every application needs a database, right? That's one of the most important things. Well, I would say the, the most important thing for any application is data uh, handling. And you know, you can't really have much of an application without data. So SQL is a programming language used to interact with the database. And I've got two courses on the SQL language. One of them is actually an Oracle SQL certification course. And the other one is uh, SQL for data science. So those are also worth taking. Okay, so you learn Java, you learn SQL. What's next? Well, next is you need to learn about object oriented design. Crucial for Java, okay? Uh, or really any object oriented uh, programming language, such as even Python and Ruby, whatever, any object oriented programming language, you need to know how to design your classes uh, so that they are extensible or develop programs that are extensible, modular, and they're decoupled. And, uh, you know, that's really, really important in terms of design. And I've got a course called Master Object Oriented Design that specifically targets, though there's a five principles known as a solid principles, okay, and that will uh, definitely help you write really, really good software, okay, as well as design patterns that are common in the industry. So you learn the Java language, you learn SQL, you learn design patterns and uh, uh, program design. What's next? Well, the next thing is to learn the popular Spring framework, okay? Very, very crucial for any Java developer, all right? You can't really uh, claim to be a Java developer a professional Java developer without knowing anything about Spring, all right? Because Spring makes Java development much, much easier. Back in the day, you know, in late 90s or even mid 90s, it was so hard to develop a web app and upload it to a server, a web server, you know, a jar or war files and struts, and there was various frameworks. Struts came in the thousands, but 2000s. But there, you know, it was very hard to get a server up and running with your application on it. And nowadays, it's it takes like two minutes. And Spring, by the way, has come a long way since the early 2000s, and uh, it's com it's faster, in my opinion, than building an app in Ruby on Rails, believe it or not. Okay, uh, you can just literally get a website up and running with a data backend uh, in two minutes. Incredible. All right. So I've got an entire course uh, talking about the Spring Framework, Spring Framework 5, and Boot 2, where we talk about Timeleaf, uh, Spring MVC, Spring Data. Hibernate. Uh, we also learn about Spring Security, Spring AOP, how to deploy applications onto production grade server. Uh, what are some of the things you'll see in corporate, uh, in, in, in an enterprise setting where you have data concerns and security concerns? So, how would that deployment be different than deploying, you know, in a startup using a Docker? Docker is a very, very popular tool nowadays to containerize your applications so that uh, you can officially write once and run everywhere, right? Back in the day, a jar file wasn't exactly write once and run everywhere uh, because there's environment variables involved, in, you know, possibly in an application as well as database configurations and security concerns and so on. With Docker, you can actually uh, create a virtual image 
of all of the necessary auxiliary components that your application needs to run on any operating system. And you can just send that package off to anyone and they'll be able to run it, all right, as if it was, you know, it would run the same way as it's, it would run in production. So that's a very, very powerful tool, uh, Docker, and I teach you in the, in the Spring uh, Framework course how to deploy uh, using Docker containers, okay, and we're going to do that on AWS. Uh, which is Amazon Web Services. So you learn Java, you learn uh, Spring, you learn object-oriented design, you learn SQL. Anything else? Yes, you also need to learn about basics of Linux commands. Now, you don't need to be a Linux expert and or go through the Linux Bible or anything. Uh, you just need to know that 20% that gets you 80% of the job done. And so I cover various Linux commands in my courses and we learn them as we go uh, through the curriculum and by the time you're done, you'll know just enough Linux uh, to, to be very proficient in the industry, okay? One thing I would add is HTML and CSS, if you're gonna get into web development, of course. And nowadays, everyone needs to know HTML, CSS, a little bit of JavaScript, but that's, that's, that's a cakewalk, okay? That's something you can learn in a week, believe it or not, the HTML and CSS stuff. There's tutorials online to do that. Uh, JavaScript uh, takes a little longer, but I've got a jQuery course in case you're interested. But that's the the web part is not as crucial, in my opinion, as the backend and server side and creating RESTful services. That's another topic we discuss in the spring course, okay? Now, the uh, use case that we're using for this spring course is to develop a project management tool where managers can assign employees uh, various projects and then they can track the stages of the project whether it's incomplete or or complete or so on um, and there's also infographic uh, to, to, to track you know how many projects are in in the pipeline and so on so it's a very uh, you can go really in deep uh, in depth uh, with a use case like that okay much much better than creating 20 Twitter Twitter clones or you know to-do list apps that that does that's not as useful in terms of learning uh, versus something that you really get uh, hands-on experience going deep into talking about security and talking about all the different things that are involved in developing and deploying an application and you kind of go deeper and deeper into it and build something that is of real value. Uh, and so that's what I target uh, in the Spring Framework course, all right? So you learn all of these things and then you become a Java developer, okay? Now, the time frame it varies, but I would say that um, uh, four months to learn the Java language, all right? If you don't know anything about programming, I'd say six months uh, to learn the Java programming language. And you don't need to, uh, my courses cover from start to finish, really. You don't need to have any experience. But I'd say dedicate six months to learning Java, uh, maybe two to three months learning SQL and databases. After learning these two, um, of course, spring, Give it another three months to learn Spring and develop a couple of cool applications. So uh, I would say one year is really all it takes to be a very proficient uh, Java developer. Um, and, you know, some, some people might take longer. Obviously, it depends on how much study you put into it. But if you're putting, you know, 30, 20 to 30 hours a week uh, studying these subjects, you should be okay after about a year. Now, to gain real full uh, confidence and proficiency, obviously more time the better, right? Uh, but after about four years in the software development space, uh, the, the confidence really starts to kick in and you can learn pretty much anything over, you know, like a week or two weeks time frame, even if you have to learn a new programming language or a new framework, things are easier uh, once you cross that uh, threshold of experience required, all right? But uh, to be proficient as a Java developer, I'd say give it one year because uh, you need to learn some of these auxiliary tools and frameworks. Boot camps that say that you, you can become a full stack developer in three months. I, would, uh, I wouldn't uh, put my entire hope in that because uh, a lot of the material is rushed through and you will get to experience a lot of the um, things that are involved in developing an application. But the problem is you will have heard of it and know of it but you will not know it or be able to do much with it because there's so much, they fire hose you with a lot of knowledge, all right? And you have to obviously uh, absorb that and it's very hard to do that in a three month time frame. all right? So if you're, let's say you have six months of experience uh, learning on the side, developing, and you, you, know, you maybe uh, created a few basic apps, 
um, then you know go ahead. Yeah, this the the boot camp will help, right? But if you're just starting off fresh, definitely three months is nothing really, right? Um, so I just want to you know let you know what the the best way of learning Java and hopefully this video is helpful. Oh, before I forget, I want to tell you uh, something really cool uh, that I did um, a couple of uh, months ago. It's already been like three months, but these videos have been released. Actually, I was invited to Seattle by Microsoft where we created um, a show with various episodes. And the idea was to explain complicated technology topics using ordinary objects around the room, right? And it was so much fun. The production crew was amazing. They were really using official cameras, makeup and everything. I had so much fun and I met uh, uh, various YouTube influencers and Instagram influencers and other instructors. Uh, and it was, I was just a very humbling experience. I had so much fun. I'm going to le leave a link in the description of this video to that as well. So make sure to check that out and maybe, uh, leave a few stills here, um, while, you know, in this video, so you can see the kind of production grade quality they were working with. But anyway, with that being said, uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe, share, uh, with as many people as you think that this would help. And with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Signing out.